Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. My name's Andrew Spawn. I'm your host, and my guest today, actually, I met um, kind of through OhioCon, which was a, a convention where I did a live episode a few episodes back. Um, my guest is Miranda, and Miranda loves roller coasters, and we kind of connected over that shared mutual interest. Um, yeah, so Miranda, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, what are you doing with your life? Um, I'm majoring in games and animation. I'm currently going to Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, and obviously, like, just visiting all the parks and riding every coaster I can. Awesome. That sounds great. And uh, for our topic, for the theme park we get to design together, we have chosen to do Dragon Ball Z, uh, created by Akira Toriyama, one of the most, you know, best-selling manga and most popular anime uh, in history at this point. It's a, a huge, huge series. Do you have any, any history with this series? Like, did you grow up watching it or anything like that? Um, I started with Z. I went back and watched like the original and then I did see GT and I've been on kind of a super kick lately. So cool. That sounds good. Yeah, I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Um, I was like right in the the correct age range. Like I started taking uh, Taekwondo lessons after watching Dragon Ball Z. Like it kind of inspired a love for for martial arts and stuff like that. It's a really cool show. I know it's like sort of a typical power fantasy where it's just like watch me get stronger and then fight this guy better and then I'll get stronger again and fight him better again but I don't know something about that is kind of fun and it's like there's always something you can aspire to so there's a little bit of an aspirational aspect to those kind of power fantasy shows even for adults I think um but yeah it's a show heavily focused on combat like the original series um Dragon Ball was more like comedy at the beginning and um the series never really lost its connection to comedy but it did get more and more action-packed over the years um And I guess, yes. So the origin of the name, Dragon Ball Z, was supposed to be like the end of Dragon Ball. It was like, we're kind of getting tired of this. We're like running out of ideas for the show. Let's do one last one last piece called Dragon Ball Z. And uh, then that part just took off and was extremely successful. So it's kind of funny that it was supposed to be the ending. But as far as the public was concerned, that was just like the beginning of the series. So it kept going and kept going and kept going. And then Dragon Ball GT came, like, a sequel to that. So it's kind of funny how how the public gets what they want out of the piece. It's not just up to the artist to, like, say, hey, this thing's done, okay? Leave me alone. It's done. Um, The public can pull it back out. It's kind of fun. So, yeah. Action, anime series, a lot of uh, buff guys shooting energy beams at each other, lots of different kinds of aliens. Um, It does make sense for a theme park, in my opinion. Just there's a a lot of action. Um a lot of fast moving, you know, particles and a lot of humans that can fly and stuff like that. So there's a lot to talk about here, a lot to unpack. Uh, Where do you think we should start with this, this theme park? Definitely a roller coaster based off the flying Nimbus. Yes. The flying Nimbus for, if, if you haven't seen the show, it's like this cloud that the main character kind of like surfs on and he can control it as a way of like getting around. Um, that's really cool. It's a very iconic cloud. And that's fun. So are you thinking like the ride vehicle would be, all the ride vehicles would be shaped like the, the Nimbus and people would just like yeah. kind of climb into it? And, yeah. In a sense, maybe even a stand-up coaster since Goku usually stands on it more than he sits on it. So mm-hmm. That's awesome. Cool. When we think about like um, kind of the big picture of this, focusing on one specific character kind of like Dragon Ball Z does is like our Batman theme park where it's like, well, you can't make the guest be Batman because then there's a million Batmans running around. It's a little bit awkward. So not everyone can be Goku, but we can kind of put them in positions or like reenactments of things that he and his friends have done in the past. It's it's kind of weird, though, because Dragon Ball is about him as a, a little kid. I think technically he's like 10 or 14 or something like that. He, he looks really young in the show, though, and it follows him up through his adult life and through the rest of his life, basically, which is kind of interesting. So it like the series progresses through time where most series stay pretty like episodic. Like the character hasn't really changed that much episode to episode. Dragon Ball Z is a lot about personal growth and characters die all the time and then come back to life. And like, there's all these major changes where continuity is a little bit strange. You know what I mean? Like for that reason, it might be weird to make a world where it's like in this part of the park, Goku's a little kid. And then this part of the park, he's a grown man this part of the park he's dead and then over here he's a little kid again which happens in dragon ball gt so it's a little weird time wise i think but maybe we could just kind of take snippets from different sections or something 
Is or, or is there a certain like framing device you think we should use? Well, I'm thinking like it, it should be centered around the guest. Maybe like put the guest in like the position of a Saiyan or something. And, you know, just like kind of like I, I wouldn't say like shove Goku off to the side, but, you know, like have him more or less interact with the guests instead of, you know, making a whole park centered around Goku. Cool. I like that. That's a good idea. And that, that kind of takes care of that worry I was I was having about like. If we are just in the world watching Goku do his thing, which era of Goku is that? So, yeah, if the park guest gets to be their own character, I love that. I think that's a lot more immersive, a lot more uh, the way things are going as far as the theme park industry goes. It's like people want to take a role on. They want to be a part of the world, not just observing it. So that sounds really cool. Um, in the Saiyans, so Saiyans are the race that, that Goku and a lot of the early characters in the show are the same alien race called Saiyan. And they're kind of the last of that race. Like, in the show, they talk about how there's not many Saiyans left in the universe. But we could get around that. You know, this could be um, sort of a time travel story or, like, alternate dimension. Like, there's just a ton of more Saiyans. Like, every part guest is a Saiyan. Or we could even do, I don't know, tie it into the story somehow where there's an influx of more Saiyans, either being born or coming from the past. Or maybe there's just, like, a hidden pocket of them somewhere in the universe. And they're, they're coming to Earth to explore the the world of dragon ball z do you think that the park guests should be able to choose like what race they want to be or is everyone a saiyan oh that that's kind of tricky because like i i feel like the series centers most around saiyans you know and the most powerful warriors are saiyans but then well save for beerus and zeno and you know all them but um but, like, I, I do know people that are, like, partial to the Namekians, and there are even some pretty strong humans in the series. So maybe it's, maybe it focuses less on, like, what race the player wants to be, and more or less just, like, the like the guest as a warrior. Cool. I like that. We could kind of ignore the, the like, race component of it, because it won't make that big of a difference on their experience. You know, it doesn't matter like what race you are all of that matters in the world of dragon ball z is like how strong you are and like who your friends are basically where your allegiances lie you could say that's cool i like that a lot and i, I think the idea of giving the the park guests some agency and letting them kind of grow and like become more powerful um either through re return visits or within the one visit like they can kind of like level up their character or whatever i think that's really fun like treating this almost like a an mmo game where you get to like pick your character and kind of customize yourself and then progress through your experiences. And then you're a different person coming out of the park than you were going in. I think that's really cool. And it allows each park guest to kind of tell their own story. That's awesome. I know you're excited to talk about roller coasters and like specific attractions. So um, we could definitely start with that. Like there are a ton of really iconic uh, vehicles and Akira Toriyama's vehicle designs is something I'm just like totally obsessed with like I've definitely thought about just doing a whole blog that is just Akira Toriyama vehicles because they're so cool like such iconic designs he just kind of tries to make things that seem like they could be real but are definitely not what's popular like I read an anecdote where back in like the 80s when cars were very angular and boxy he drew all of his cars really round and really like otherworldly because it was just a totally different design style and then as cars got more re more round and more smooth in real life, his cars started to get more angular and boxy. Like, he's just always going, like, countercultural with his design influences. And, like, um, he'll get fan mail suggesting something about the story. And if he thinks it's interesting, he'll do the opposite of that, <laughs> which I think is, like, really funny. It's like, um, I don't know, he's just, like, very... He goes his own way. And, and sometimes just to go opposite other people, just to be contrarian. It's kind of fun, but it makes his designs really, really unique. Like, he totally, his art style stands out from everything else uh, in the world. You know, you can tell definitely when it's an Akira Toriyama drawing. So having a world that reflects that, I think, is going to be super, super cool. So, yeah, those vehicles could definitely form the basis of a lot of cool coasters. Um, are there any you're, like, really dying to start talking about? Any thoughts? Not really, but uh, one of the things about the vehicles, I think, is because it, like, highlights aliens so much. You know, yes. Namekians, Saiyans, you know, other kind of aliens and then monsters. I'm not really sure what Frieza and them are exactly. But, <laughs> right. Um, 
<laughs> but it's like all these different creatures. So I feel like he wants to make things different and, you know, be like, you know, the, these aren't, you know, these aren't people. These aren't anything you'd see on Earth. These came from another planet somewhere else. Yeah, I like that. Um, one of the first vehicles you see in Dragon Ball Z is that that totally spherical Saiyan like escape pod or life pod or whatever it's called, which is kind of like it's sort of based on the like Clark Kent like Superman origin story, where he's you know being he's escaping his his dying civilization's planet in this little like life pod. Um, and that's what Goku comes to earth on and Vegeta comes to earth on those little pods are so beautiful and so iconic. I think doing an attraction like that would be really cool. Whether it's like, um, one of those like launch attractions that just like slingshots you up. Like those vehicles are already shaped the same as that ride vehicle anyway. Um, but I think they would also work well on like the end of, um, kind of like a Zephyr kind of roller coaster or like a, um, a big swing. Because it's just like a little pod. It's very, like, aerodynamic, and I don't know. It's really cool looking. What are your thoughts on something based on that vehicle? I think they would be, like, more of, like, since they're designed to go through space, I would even, you know, say, like, a dark ride or an indoor launch coaster. Have you ever been on Flight of Fear at Kings Island? Yes, that's a great attraction. I love that. Similar to that one. That's cool. Um, It might be interesting, too, if, if we're doing, like, kind of a somewhat story driven um like a narrative to each coaster you know they could start out in space and they end up on a planet's surface because when those pods hit a planet you know it like digs a big crater it might be kind of interesting if that's how it ends is like you know you see the visuals of like you're smashing into a planet's surface like on the ending like straight away when the the attraction's starting to slow down you see like a planet from far away and you just like get closer and closer and closer until you like smash into it and create a, a crater so then the exit of the vehicle you have to like climb out of a, a crater at the end there are some at like Disney and Universal that like come to pretty abrupt stops, so you mm-hmm. could even like simulate that. I, I guess that feeling, like obviously you would have to watch and make sure that you don't give people whiplash. <laughs> right. We've got engineers for that; they'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> so, do you think maybe some of these coasters should be VR coasters? I know you you mentioned earlier you kind of have like hopes to maybe have a future in the the vr like roller coaster industry do you like vr coasters in general like do you think that's a good idea to have people with headsets on while they're flying around in the dark ride for me that depends um like coasters like millennium force at cedar point like obviously i wouldn't want to replace that view with anything (laughs) but um but there's an attraction at bush gardens williamsburg i I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like Battle for Eerie Eye or something like that. Huh. And, uh, you know, that's that's a VR attraction, and I think that could definitely be pulled off. Cool. Like, even if it's like an indoor attraction, right. I think that would be best. Yeah, like you said, what like if you have a, a beautiful natural view... You don't want to, like, block that off by having everyone with VR visors on. So definitely we should put this in, like, kind of an uglier corner of the park where there's not much of a view and maybe it's wedged behind a taller attraction where it's like, well, all you would see is this bigger attraction anyway. So let's put this, like, in a in a building and then also it can be a VR experience. That'd be cool. And that would make the, the feeling of crashing into a planet much more realistic if you, you know, it's not just like a screen and you can see your coaster in front of you. It's just like that is all you're seeing. It's like you're looking out the portal, the little view panel on one of these one of these vehicles as it just smashes into a planet. That's that would be pretty fun. Do we want to like take turns? Like is there another vehicle you want to base an attraction on at this point? Remember that scene with Frieza's ship and Vegeta goes in to steal the Dragon Balls and like breaks into the ship and throws all of them out one by one? Yes. Like thinking something to do with Frieza's ship, whether there be a ride inside it or some kind of attraction within the ship itself. That's cool. Frieza's ship has really iconic design. I'm I'm probably going to get tired of saying iconic design about Akira Toriyama's work, but Frieza's ship in particular is, is very alien. I mean, he's an alien. That kind of makes sense. But yeah, that'd be fun. Um, Would you want to do like uh, where the player kind of takes the role of Vegeta or just something else using Frieza's ship in general? 
you know like those mazes maybe like those horror mazes you see during halloween yeah you know like kind of an escape room type thing yeah oh that's awesome like where where you're kind of like vegeta and you have to break into frieza's ship and like progress through a storyline without getting caught by frieza <sighs> that's so cool i love the theming of of this park like the alien designs are really cool and um the vehicles and so like being able to actually go into one and kind of feel things like when you're in an escape room it really gives you a nice like um tactile feeling of what that world is like like it's such a cool form of storytelling for me because it's not just words or moving pictures it's like you can actually go like look up close on the the art design and feel the details on the walls and all of the different objects you get to interact with were designed to be interacted with you know it's not just a passive medium like like movies or or books or whatever so i think that's really cool that that we'd be able to actually interact with with frieza's actual ship like that sounds amazing i love that um, this isn't a vehicle, but the opening theme song of Dragon Ball Z, when they're like running on the back of the dragon, I always thought that'd be a really interesting attraction, whether it's just kind of like a, a big, um, you know, like a walking path you can go on, which I know that's kind of boring and literally pedestrian, but it'd be really cool looking. Hey, remember Snake Way and Z? Yeah. When Goku died and he had to make his way back to Earth? around snake way oh yeah like, and it's like a super long path yeah and like all the walkways should look like that but i think that there should be some kind of attraction i'd say probably maybe have the biggest ride or coaster there be shenron based that's a cool like a really iconic name for an attraction like if you see that on the park map you'll definitely want to add that to your itinerary another really interesting kind of roadway that i'm picturing would be like king kai's planet um, I realize it's physically impossible to recreate that because in the show it's just a really, really small planet where, you know, like the, the whole perimeter of it is like probably less than a mile, maybe half a mile all the way around the planet. So it's really funny to just kind of watch the characters um, move around on it because it's so so tiny. It's just it's a really unusual thing that doesn't exist in, in our reality that it's that's really cool looking. It might be neat to do some kind of attraction with that, though. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on King Kai's planet? Maybe have, like, an attraction that takes you around it, like one of those motion simulator things, uh -huh. and, and that, like, kind of simulates going around the planet. That's a great idea. It could be even taking a ride, because he has a car, which is really funny. He's the only person living on the planet, but he has a car, and he can, like, just drive around the whole planet. So that might be, like, a fun little ride. Maybe um, if we have kind of a 40 theater area, maybe that could be, like, just a part of it. Like, maybe that's the loading screen is just, like you driving along King Kai's little planet. That's cute. Because it wouldn't be a fun attraction. You know, it's just a straight road uh, that just goes back to the same place it started. Like, it's not very fun, but it's it's a cool design. It's kind of a fun thing. It could also just be sort of in the background of one of the other coasters. Like, you know, maybe there's a, a coaster where you're just kind of, like, flying through space. And at a certain point, you kind of slow down and start to turn a corner, and there's King Kai's planet, and you get like a, a close-up of it before you take off again. I always had a big um, affinity for Bulma's uh, motorcycle that's got that like glass like oh. arc over it. Like I have a model of that on my desk at work. It's such a cool bike design. Um, I think that might work well for a coaster, and even you know it, the main part of it has like a, a visor going the whole way this way. That's like totally translucent. So it might be cool to do something with a screen right there. Um, whether maybe it's, maybe it is a VR attraction and you just need to kind of focus on the part that's right in front of you. Um, or it could just be like a motion, motion ride kind of vehicle. Like you get in the vehicle and, you know, you've got that glass part here, but it's actually all a screen. So you could do a 40 kind of motion ride in that kind of vehicle. Have you seen the Tron rides at like Shanghai Disneyland that um, look like your light cycles? Is it where you actually ride on the light cycles on a roller coaster? Yeah. Yeah, I've it, seen it, those. It's like the Tron coaster. Mm hmm Like mm -hmm. something similar to that, but yeah. maybe also like a VR dark ride, something. That sounds awesome. If the park guest kind of gets to be their own character, like they, they're they just a character in the Dragon Ball Z universe, um, it might be kind of cool if they have a way to like track their progression. Like maybe their power level goes up over time or they have some way of actually collecting the Dragon Balls, which... I realize that should probably be a, a limited offer. Like, I don't think we want every single park guest getting all seven Dragon Balls. That kind of breaks the universe, um, messes up the storyline. But 
I would love to have some some collectibles and some kind of gamification little elements to their to each park guest's journey. Do you have any any ideas for that? Like maybe like and I have another idea, like base attractions and stuff off the enemies and the villains. Like yeah. Cedar Point's doing this battle game where it's like the entire park is kind of gamified and you have to like conquer Cedar Point in a way. And uh you know, that could be an element of the park and you could receive like something resembling the Dragon Balls. So there'd have to be like seven of them and then at the end you can trade them into, you know, something resembling Shenron for a prize. That sounds so cool. And I haven't seen this thing at Cedar Point. Is it currently active? It, it's it's an app that you play from the park. It's like an augmented reality thing. They gave the rides like their own little like warrior personas, and then and then you like go around the park. You you ally with one of them, and then you try and take over the other one. I love that so much. Like that is such a cool idea. And I'm going to to Cedar Point in two weeks, so that's that's awesome. It'll be right around the time when this recording comes out. Actually, I'll be at Cedar Point, so. That sounds so cool. I hope that I get to try that while I'm there. That sounds awesome. I love that. And we're so lucky in Ohio. We have so many cool theme parks. Like most states don't have this. You know, growing up near near Kings Island, I was like, oh yeah, every major city has a theme park. Like, duh. But that's <laughs> totally not the case. It's it's kind of rough. I'm so glad. Like it's one of my favorite parts about Ohio. Honestly, like there's that kind of I don't know spirit of of entertainment and of um, amusement. Like amusement's in a priority. You know. There's nothing else too exciting about the state, so let's make some cool stuff, some cool water parks and theme parks, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. Do you think we should do a similar thing, like where there are a theme park, I'm sorry, where there are roller coasters based just on one villain, and then all the park guests are the heroes fighting against it? Yeah, and then like for each ride they do, they've like defeated that villain, and you know, and then they get something for it, and if they do all of them, they can exchange you know, whatever they get for defeating the villains, they can exchange those for prizes or something. That's so cool. So, I mean, for for the listener, if you collect all seven of these Dragon Balls, which are spread across the planet or the universe, um, if you collect all seven, then you get to, like, make a wish, and that wish will come true. Which, generally in the series, it's to bring back someone who died because people are dying all the time because they're fighting these really overpowered uh, aliens all the time. But it's kind of hard to make a park guest's actual wish come true. Like, I know there's, like, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It'd be cool to, like, work with them in some way. But it's it's hard to make actual wishes come true, especially for every single park guest. Um, so maybe collecting the Dragon Balls is really hard to do. Like, um... However, we do want to have a, a reward, you know, an incentive. So maybe, like, there's a power level that you kind of increase with every defeated enemy. You're, like, getting stronger and getting tougher. And then based on your power level, you can get access to more exclusive um, attractions and experiences. And then maybe finding the Dragon Balls is something you actually have to do. Like, it's a bit like a scavenger hunt. And I think it'd be cool if they were actual, like, full-sized, realistic uh, scale Dragon Balls. And you actually find them. And that's annoying, like, you don't want to carry that around with you all day, because they're pretty big. But you could take it, you know, to park services somewhere and exchange that. They're like, okay, well, this is, you know, on your account now, or whatever. We'd have to come up with a story element, like, you're taking that to, to you know, an ally, maybe someone at Capsule Corp to, like, to keep it in safekeeping for you, um, so that you don't have to carry around this huge Dragon Ball, or seven of them, if you're a return visitor and you've been collecting a lot of them. But it'd be cool to hide it as a... Um, a scavenger hunt kind of thing or hide it in those really exclusive areas where only people with high power levels can even get access to them might make it a really fun um kind of tease you know if it's like your first time to the park it's like um you maybe you see someone carrying around a dragon ball and you're like wait they actually are in the theme park like that's so cool i need to figure out how to get those um it'd be really fun to kind of have that sort of com- competition element you know where if everyone on the in the world of Dragon Ball knew about the Dragon Balls, I feel like more and more people would be out there hunting for them, and everyone would be buying their own little dragon radar trying to to track them down. So doing that in the park, I think, would be would be fun and create like a sense of community almost. Like, you found the Dragon Ball, like that's amazing. Where did you get that? And like, 
what are you going to wish for? And, you know, there's all those kinds of conversations you can start from that. I, I would say don't, like, grant an actual wish, mainly because people's wishes can be very, very, very outlandish. <laughs> True. And, uh, so I, I would do, like, more or less, you know, offer certain prizes or certain, like, things that you can offer to them when you get all of them. I kind of like that. Um, I, I would say, like, maybe hide seven of them in the park and then, you know, like, it, if you find one, maybe, like, you, like, you get, and then you end up with this, like, group of, like, seven people that, you know, get this thing, like, whether it be an exclusive experience or maybe even, like, free tickets for a return trip or something. That's a great idea. I really like that. Um, and as you were just saying that, it kind of inspired an idea, like, what if, you know, you kind of get these these seven people who found the Dragon Balls to kind of work together. So maybe we have a story element where, you know, one some classic character is like is dead or needs help with something like kind of like the wish is already predetermined in the story. And so it's up to all of these these part guests, all these new characters to help find them, because, you know, the main crew of of heroes is already locked in this huge combat. So they're a little bit too busy to go actually looking for the Dragon Balls. So then as part guests, we get to kind of help them out and like kind of join their team and help the the overall effort. On the topic of other planets, would you want, like we talked about with King Kai's planet, would you want to do like uh, Planet Namek or any of the other planets from the series? Or are we just going to say we're, this, this park is based on planet Earth, it's located on planet Earth, so, you know, most of the attraction should take place on planet Earth. I would have certain things be on different planets. Like, is this just Dragon Ball Z, or are we going to include, like, the original or Super? Because, I mean, like, Department of Power is held, like, in its own area. You know, there's, you know, other planets a lot of times, like, battles between particularly powerful characters will either be in space or on, like, a barren planet so they don't destroy the Earth. Right, right. That's really thoughtful of them to to do that. (laughs) Namek was destroyed, so... Yep, that's true. All right, I'm, I'm all right with that. Um, that's the the question of if we include Dragon Ball, it has a lot to do with the canon, you know what I mean? If, if um, you know, Bulma's a, a grown woman, she can't be, like, a teenage girl anymore. You know, like, we have to kind of pick, like, a point in time, in the, the canon time, to set this whole thing, unless we want to do kind of a... Um, a sort of like mashup of realities or one of those storylines where it's like, um, you know, like like there's a, a black hole and somehow time is being distorted and there's a bunch of different versions of all these characters running around. Like that's a s- pretty popular thing in comic books. You know, all these different realities are smashing together and now there's 25 Spider-Men. Like you can do those kinds of things, but um, I don't know if we want to do that or just have like a specific set in time and there's only one version of each of these heroes. So they're all unique characters, and then all of us park guests are just kind of the rest of the universe filling in around them. I, I would say, like, maybe themed areas, because, like, have you have you seen, like in, like, in an actual park, it's like sometimes there's areas that are vastly different, you know, depending on what park you go into. And then there's King's Dominion that put a coaster themed after a race car into a section themed after Africa. So there's... <laughs> that and, and like, like can be incredibly random and mismatched <laughs> so. that's cool okay so i like the idea of theming it maybe after each each section like each land is a different planet and um even having the kind of barren ones that are just like this planet seems to exist just for dragon ball z characters to fight on having those wouldn't be that boring because that could be where all the the combat happens which which we can talk about in the future um, so maybe we do that. Like it's kind of kind of a, a universe, but then I think it's a little bit strange how the lands will butt up against each other. So if it's like there's a planet here and a planet here, I don't know. It's just it feels a little bit weird. Unless we want to kind of wall them all off, like in um, the Truman Show, kind of how there's like the dome that looks like the sky on the inside. We could have a bunch of a series of little domes like that. Which, that might be kind of cool, actually, because then if you need some flying characters to be fighting overhead, it can just be on the screen, you know, make the dome a screen. Oh. And then you could control the weather, and there's a lot of stuff you could do with that. That's that's going to cost us a pretty really penny, but... <laughs> What's that? That would be a lot of tech. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we won't be opening for several years, so we can kind of kind of plan on uh, some future technology being available and the, the prices dropping on those <laughs> technologies. 
Or, hmm, is there another, is there a simpler solution to that? Or should we just deal with it? It's a theme park. You'll be able to see another planet from, from wherever you're standing. I, I would say, like, just make different areas based off the planets, like, not, like, physical planets. Yeah, I'm sure the park guests would be okay with it. I just wasn't sure if we, how hardcore we wanted to be with the theming and how immersive we wanted it to be. Epcot is, like, a good example of, like, several themes coming together, you know? It doesn't yeah. seem like they're all smashed together. But, you know, a lot of the areas are extremely different, and yet the park just, you know, they, they made it work. They they made it not seem weird or awkward at all. Yeah. I really value your appreciation of all these different theme parks from across the planet, because having, like, a point of reference and saying, like, well, here's an example of how they did it well, like, that's such an, a useful resource. Like, having a, a knowledge of what exists currently and what is possible makes makes brainstorming even more doable, I think. So it's not that we're, like, lost in, like, how could this possibly ever happen? I can't think of it. I can't picture it. It's like, oh, here's an example. We can build off of that. Like, that's so useful. I, I'm, I'm glad you're on the show. That's pretty cool. Thanks. So we touched on this briefly earlier. Um, the show started out mostly as a comedy kind of uh, adventure show, um, and then it kind of has transitioned into more and more combat. There are always these different, like, martial arts tournaments, and there's the cell games, and uh, most of the video games, you know, are fighting games. Like there's a lot of combat in this show. So what are your thoughts on, on representing combat to our park guests? Like, can they battle each other for experience points or is it more just a metaphor of you ride this attraction as you're taking down this, this villain? I I would say like, kind of like the competition element, like with the, with the gamified Cedar point, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. or cause like that you're technically like, competing with other players to take up like the most of the peninsula and then like maybe they they make like dark rides that like give you blasters and stuff where you can shoot down the bad guys and stuff so i mean that's always possible to have like a to have like an interactive ride where you're actually fighting something wow that that's true and that's cool and you could even do a head-to-head -head kind of coaster you know maybe there's one with a lot of um intertwining tracks and you have a little blaster that represents you know your energy beams you're shooting out and so you're like dueling against your friend or maybe like a bunch of people each riding on their own nimbus cloud or or you know what i mean they each have their own little vehicle and you're trying to like shoot as many of those people as you can as they're trying to shoot you guys um and that could be just against um, several enemies or it could be like a head-to-head -head kind of thing representing one of the martial arts tournaments I think something that pits the guests against each other could be interesting. Yeah, you don't see that too often. It's not really in the in the spirit of the average amusement park, you know, where it's everything's like magical and fun, and uh, you don't have to worry about your friends shooting you with energy beams. But it might be fun, you know, amp up the competition because I do think people who love Dragon Ball Z are are somewhat okay with combat. I know it might look a little bit dorky, but maybe instead of holding a blaster, there's like some kind of glove maybe like a fingerless glove that attaches to your hand and it's like represents like the energy beams that you can shoot out and you know you can do all the like special moves like it could be a sort of motion based controls on these little handheld little uh, energy launchers or whatever <laughs> sounds kind of dorky but i think in reality it could look really cool especially with some augmented reality you know if you've got a scouter covering one of your eyes that's basically an ar screen you could have that really cool. You know, if you put your hands together, you can actually see a Kamehameha, like, launch out. That would be cool. It'd be cool to uh, be able to interact with the environment uh, just using this, this augmented reality powers that you have. Maybe something like some kind of AR game, like, especially if we were to go with the dome thing. Like, you know, maybe, like, at certain times there would be a spontaneous attack from, like... A like any of the villains basically mm -hmm. and you know like have and have the villain come in there and all the part guests that can go and try and defeat this villain together that's really cool <laughs> that sounds super fun i would totally get down on something like that um and then also if if the um you know the kind of controls are somewhat universal you know there's many different uh situations where you'll be using these these energy beam things from your hands It'd be cool and natural to be able to, when you're on a, a roller coaster and you're fighting against some enemy, it's the same exact controls. You know, you use your hands in the same way on every different attraction. So you kind of do get better as a player in a way. Like as a park guest, 
your your character kind of levels up as your skills increase. You know, your your accuracy and that kind of thing would increase during your during your visit and during your battles. Um, <laughs> it might be interesting if if uh, you're playing kind of a, a Saiyan character, you get to a certain point where you can go Super Saiyan, which in the show that's like everyone your hair turns blonde and it stands up, and this is what people generally picture when they think of Dragon Ball Z. Um, you know, there's like yellow energy going everywhere, and there's different levels of Super Saiyan um, with different physical appearance changes. And I don't think any of these are actually possible to transform our part guests into Super Saiyans, but I wonder if there's a way we could represent that somehow. You know, maybe there's like a, a silly little attraction that's like a mirror and you like go look in it and it's like a, a Snapchat filter almost where it just like turns your hair into Super Saiyan hair and like has the like energy radiating off of you and that kind of stuff. It'd be kind of like a fun little gimmick, uh, virtual makeover kind of thing. That, I, I don't know. Some people would be into that, I think. It seems like a, a social media thing. Or maybe just with when you're within the park or you're using the park's app or whatever, there's like little filters you can use like that for, for posting on social media. Have you seen like the on-ride photos and how they add like kind of the border to them? Yeah. Like maybe something like that if you go on an attraction oh. like... Maybe even one of those interactive ones, and if you get, like, a certain score, they'll give you Super Saiyan hair or that aura around you. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh, especially if it's somewhat competitive. You know, everyone on your on the ride vehicle is trying to take down the same enemies. And if by the time you get to the photo area, you've taken down, you know, you're, you're the top leader or whatever, then you come out um, in the photo, your character just has a lot more energy. They're a much higher level. Um so you can kind of like show rankings instead of saying first place, second place, third place. You look at the photo and you see who has like the the biggest, craziest hair or who looks like Super Saiyan 4 or whatever. Uh, that that could be kind of a fun way to, to sort of rank people. And I think the technology will be there in a few years. You know, if it's it works the way it works on Snapchat so easily that while you're, you know, getting off the ride vehicle and walking down towards the uh, the little exit of through the gift shop area... You could have the photos ready with, you know, each person's sort of rank or power level or whatever you want to call that. That's really fun. One area that I think would be kind of cool is doing like a red ribbon army sort of area, which like just seeing the the sort of the androids. I always thought that the android saga of Dragon Ball Z was really cool. And the red ribbon parts of Dragon Ball were always really interesting to me. So doing some really cool animatronics and kind of framing it through the lens of of the red ribbon army might be an interesting little area you could walk around in like either as maybe a museum of their history or something like that or or as like a an interactive uh, kind of laser tag shooting gallery kind of attraction where you have to go fight your way through all the androids um it'd be cool to include red ribbon somehow those were like most of my main ideas i think obviously there's a lot of different villains that we can base different attractions on like different roller coasters um and it's kind of cool because it's such a sort of fantasy martial arts show it'd be interesting to base the roller coasters and like their patterns off of each character's fighting style um and kind of kind of give it like some some pacing like an actual fight where you know there's kind of slower areas where there's like a little bit of dialogue um maybe a character's been charging up an attack for a long time so we could kind of try to reflect that in the design of the roller coaster like it it could be a really cool uh artistic project to kind of come up with the way that that each of these fights is going to unfold um i think that would be really cool to develop but for our purposes here of just kind of doing the brainstorming i think we've we've reached a really good point with with the villains and the kind of the combat system and like the leveling up system, but there's still a lot of stuff we could add. Um, is anything pop into mind to you for you? I, I have an idea when you brought up the coasters, like you said before, like a dueling dual tracked coaster. Um, the fandom is generally like polarized between Goku or Vegeta. Yes. So it's like you, you could have like a dual tracked coaster. One side represents Goku, the other side represents Vegeta, and they both just kind of like interact with each other. Kind of like you, you could add like an interactive, like kind of shooting element towards it, or just have like dueling kind of coasters, or you come in like very close contact with the other side. That's awesome. That's really cool. And, and if we have these characters as 
you know, the like they actually exist within the theme park. Like it'd be kind of interesting if you are like flying behind each of them during a battle, um, where you could kind of you know hear their them just hear them like talking with each other and like hearing each of their perspectives and each of their like kind of opinions and thoughts on on each other and what they're doing. It'd be really cool, like getting getting voice actors to take back you know work on their roles again in this one like showdown between those two characters that'd be that'd be something the fans would love and it'd be pretty cool and it works with our those you know like you said the dueling like two track coasters that's awesome that's a good idea that's fun we haven't talked about master roshi at all do you have any any ideas of if we need to include him or how you would want to i i like the idea what is it kami kami house like yes. his 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 home, I definitely think that should be a building within the park. That'd whether be really that cool be visit. a gift shop or a ride entrance or something that needs to be in there. I love that. That's a great idea. That's really fun. Um, I I've always been really fascinated by Capsule Corp and doing like a, you know, maybe their headquarters is like an area you can explore, or there's like a shop that's that's all Capsule Corp stuff. Um, because their role within the world of Dragon Ball Z and the technology they create is so cool and so fascinating that it'd be neat to say, like, a lot of these attractions were designed by Capsule Corp and put the little Capsule Corp logo on stuff. Um, that'd be really fun. And you could, not saying that we have to or that I even want to, we could, we could frame this like the whole theme park is like a simulation of what it's like to be one of the, the Z fighters or whatever you want to call them, um, during their, like, during their heyday, like if they're they're famous characters in Earth's history, um, in this timeline, then having like a an interactive theme park based on them would be kind of a cool thing. Like they definitely lived interesting lives, uh, according to people who live in this reality. So being able to step into their shoes and kind of pretend to be one of them would would make sense. So in a way, theming this theme park as if it's made by Capsule Corp on planet Earth within the world of Dragon Ball Z. I know that's a little bit meta or a little weird maybe, but it could work. We could do that if we wanted to. Um, you know how like Dragon Ball GT came out in the in the United States in like the mid aughts, like two thousand five or six or something. But yeah. it aired in Japan in like ninety six or ninety seven, I think. So I went to um to Mexico when I was a, a little kid, like when Dragon Ball Z was still airing, like I'm pretty sure it was before the Cell Saga. And Dragon Ball GT was already in on air in Mexico. And so, like, I got all these toys from Dragon Ball GT, and I was like, look at these weird bootleg Dragon Ball Z characters I got. Like, they repainted them, and they look all crazy, and, like, this guy has these gold things coming off of his shoulders, and I don't know what any of this stuff is, but it looks like Dragon Ball Z, like these cool fake Mexican Dragon Ball Z characters. And then, like, ten years later, Dragon Ball GT is on, and I'm like, what? What? Those were real? Like, I thought they were bootleg, but they were just so ahead of the curve compared to the United States that they were actually from Dragon Ball GT. If you think about this, this, the impact that Dragon Ball Z has had, it's huge. Like, there are still kids today at the high school where I work who are, like, obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. It's like, this show is so old, you know? Like, the original manga, I think, ended in 1989. Like, that's crazy how old it is, but it's still so popular and going strong. The only other idea I have right now is something I don't really want to do, but is kind of cute. Like if we had, um, a food area and a lot of the, there's like kind of vegetable dishes that are based off of the Saiyan names. Um, cause <laughs> all the Saiyan characters names are like puns off of vegetables. Um, and the word Saiyan is based on the Japanese word for vegetable. So like it's really dorky and it's, it's pretty low, uh, low brow, I guess, or dumb to do, but It'd be kind of cute, and you know, you could have like a senzu bean salad. Like you could make some uh, some pretty silly themed food, um, which I do think fits with the kind of Akira Toriyama style. Like he does some pretty goofy stuff in his in his shows, um, his series rather that we could include there. I know this is gonna sound really cheesy, but you know the Ginyu Force pose. Yeah. Like think there should be like an area in the park like a photo op to do that pose like oh, with yeah. whatever group you're coming with and like a way to post it on social media like a certain yes. hashtag or something that's great I, I mean honestly we could just like take over snapchat's uh filter idea do the the super saiyan hair do the like kind of ginyu force or uh the saiyan armor 
because I always thought that armor looked really cool too. And then you could do the poses of each of the characters and yeah, that's, that's fun. Um, having just like, yeah, kind of a, um, photo shoot area where you have to try to like reenact various, various poses and stuff. And you can, you know, take your picture with the dragon balls and all that stuff would be fun. You could have like a little mini game to see who can stand in the spirit bomb pose the longest so it's like your spirit bomb just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger the longer you stand there and then eventually one person's will knock the other one out or or destroy the planet before the other person can or whatever it'd be kind of a fun little mini game maybe we could do a the giant monkey like this the saiyans can turn into maybe we could have an attraction where you are one of those giant monkeys like almost like a godzilla kind of attraction where you play as like the monster it could be a VR oh. thing where, you know, you can, like, knock down buildings and, and that kind of stuff would be kind of cool. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. What could we do with Ozaru? Um, that's, I think that's, like, the canon name for it. Ozaru um, might be the Japanese name. But um, definitely maybe a VR thing or, you know, maybe even, like... Y- I think there was like kind of a King Kong ride where you're like in the helicopter or going around King Kong. Huh. I, I could be wrong. I, I know there was a Kong encounter where you sat in it where you sat in this vehicle and he like picks you up and spins you around. But like so maybe even something like that or like a ride where it's like where Azaru comes up to you and like maybe swings at you and then you feel that in the ride. That's like awesome. kinda like one of those really immersive universal simulators yeah that sounds really fun that's cool because that's like a really scary destructive force you know a lot of things in dragon ball z can kill you but most of them just kind of look like human or they're about human scale those things uh would be pretty threatening to see in real life didn't cell arrive in like a giant egg or something i think so i can't quite picture it but i'm pretty sure it was like a weird alien kind of uh, appearance yeah I, I think that would be like kind of interesting either like just allow people to go in there and explore or make that like kind of an attraction in and of itself yeah you know kind of like the cell egg or cocoon or yeah that part that you could do some kind of creepy almost like haunted house ish kinds of things you know if it's like a an attraction that's somewhere like even if you just do it like during halloween season you put some of these like eggs throughout the park and it's like you know you you it's it's got like kind of an interactive element to it where it's it's like an alien kind of attraction um yeah that'd be cool you know if if like you go there and it's still sealed and everything and then you go through like a little bit of a maze and you see it again and it's like open but it's empty and you're like what what's this and then uh you know cell like chases you around or whatever that could be kind of cool like they could make a live action uh cell movie that would be pretty scary um what do you think about doing something time travel related with trunks maybe mm. do an attraction where you go in the time machine and you go to like the, his like home time period that kind of post-apocalyptic uh future and you could do like some kind of attraction or escape room in that time period um and then come back to the the present oh kind of an interesting like theme a little bit of a getaway because everything else is set in the same time yeah that'd be kind of cool that, that's an idea, like, have it, like, be maybe an enclosed thing, so it's like, a, there there is, like, a clear enter and exit, but mm-hmm. then, you know, but then, yeah, it's, like, kind of its own little pocket within the universe we already have. Yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. We include other universes, like, you know, Jiren and Tapo and... Or, or would we not get that deep into... Because I know this is, like, mainly Z, but I'm kind of, like, going into super here. Yeah, I, we totally could. I think that including as much as possible would be neat. Um, or even the time machine. You know, we could go back to the Dragon Ball era when Goku's a little kid. Um, or go to the GT era, and that allows for, you know, a lot of, like, space travel and a lot... They, they go to a lot of planets on that show. But being able to kind of change the the time period would be kind of interesting. And maybe that's something we could even do in the theme park over the years is like, you know, this summer we're doing a Dragon Ball event where the whole park is kind of thrown back like 20 years or whatever. And it's set in the time period when Goku was young. Um, So you have a lot of those characters running around who aren't normally involved anymore because they're, you know, not in the Dragon Ball Z series. 
or go into the future where it's GT and um, just change the characters out again for like that summer. It would be kind of kind of interesting. So we did it. We designed a Dragon Ball Z theme park, and uh, I think it came out pretty cool. I think fans of the series will be fans of the park and vice versa. So I feel like it represents pretty well. Um, cool. Any anything else you want to say about the theme park? Um, not really. I think it turned out very good overall. It definitely does reflect well on the series and everything in it. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for being on. This was this was really fun. I'm glad you were a guest. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.